ई कोलाई और स्टेरिशिया कोलाई इट इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एरो विच इज हैड इन द गेट ऑफ ह्यूमन एंड एनिमल इट इज ग्राम नेगेटिव स्ट्रेट रोड अरेंज सिंगली एंड द इंपॉर्टेंट वैरल एंड फैक्टर्स इंक्लूड द सर्फस एंटीजन एंड टॉक्सिन सर्फस एंटीजन इंक्लूड सोमैटिक ओ एंटीजन फ्रेजल एच एंटीजन कैप्सुल के एंटीजन एंड फिम्रियल एंटीजन एंड द टॉक्सीन इंक्लूड एंड्रोटॉक्सीन हिमोलाइसिन सैटोटॉक्सीडी नेक्रोटाइसिन फैक्टर वन एंड सेक्रेटेड एंड्रो ट्रांसपोर्टर टॉक्सीन देन सिडर ऑफ फोर्स फर्स्ट अबाउट सोमैटिक ओ एंटीजन इट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वैरल फैक्टर इट इज लिपोपोलीसैक्रेट एंटीजन इट इज हिस्टेबल responsible for endotoxicity activity and it to protect bacteria from phagocytosis and bacteriocidal effect of complement then flagellar h antigen it is heat labile and it make the bacteria motile then capsular k antigen it is polysaccharide capsular antigen and it includes the o antigen and renders the strain inagglutinable by o antigen and it also inhibit phagocytosis It is expressed by only few strains of E. coli, example those causing neonatal meningitis, pyelonephritis, and septicemia. The number fimbrial antigen. Fimbria or pilus is the organ of adhesion. It helps in the attachment and colonization. And the various fimbrial antigens are CFA colonization factor antigen. It is found in enterotoxigenic E. coli and manosuresistant fimbria, which is present in or expressed in. Europathogenic E. coli and P. fimbriae, which bind to the P. group antigens present on human RBCs and uroepithelial cells. Then about toxins. First about enterotoxin. It is produced by diarogenic strains of E. coli. Three types are present. First is heat labile toxin, then heat stable toxin, and verocytotoxin or shiga like toxin. Then about hemolysins. It is present. in viral strains of e coli especially pyelonephritic strains then third toxin is cytotoxic necrotizing factor 1 and secreted antitransporter toxin it is toxigenic to bladder and kidney cells then fourth toxin is sideroforce it helps in the iron uptake then about its clinical manifestations The UT and diarrhea are the main clinical manifestations. UT is caused by uropathogenic E. coli, and diarrhea is caused by six types of diarrhoeic E. coli. That are enteropathogenic E. coli, enterotoxigenic E. coli, enteroinvasive E. coli, enterohemorrhagic E. coli, enteroaggregative E. coli, and diffusely adherent E. coli. It also causes abdominal infections like bacterial peritonitis, hepatic abscess. Then ventilator-associated pneumonia, neonatal meningitis, diabetic food. These are also caused by E. coli. Then about diarrhea, we know that six types of diarrheic E. coli cause diarrhea. First about enteropathogenic E. coli. It is the frequent cause of diarrhea in infants, and it also causes occasional sporadic diarrhea in adults then it is non toxigenic and non invasive and the mechanism of action is it adhere to the intestinal mucosa then form cup like projections called pedicels then attaching and efficacizing lesions are formed which leads to disruption of brush border epithelium and which cause watery diarrhea then enterotoxigenic e coli it is the most common cause of Traumatic diarrhea. It causes acute watery diarrhea in adults and infants. And the most common serotype involved are O6, O18, O15, O25, and O153, and also O159. It is toxigenic and non-invasive. The toxin involved are heat labile toxin and heat stable toxin. It attaches to the intestinal mucosa by fimbriae called colonization factor antigen. Then about it, the toxins. Heat labile toxin. It is a cholera toxin. It has two parts, A and B. B are the binding part, which bind to the 
GM1 ganglioside receptors in the intestinal epithelial cell. Then a or active factor which yield two fragment A1 and A2. The A1 activate the adenyl cyclase in the enterocytes and form increased amount of cyclic A and B which leads to loss of water and electrolytes in large amount which leads to the diarrhea. Then about heat stable toxin. It is purely antigenic and it acts through activation of cyclic GMB. Then about enteroinvasive E. coli. It is invasive but not toxinic. It invades the intestinal epithelial cells by plasmid coated antigen called virulence marker antigen or VMA and the infection resembles sugar losses or dysentery and the diagnosis of enteroinvasive E. coli include detection of VMA by ELISA, helal cell invasion assay, then serenade test in which inoculation of bacterial suspension into guinea pig eyes produce conjunctivitis. Compared to other E. coli strains, enteroinvasive E. coli are biochemically atypical being non-motile lactose non-fermentates and negative for lysine decarboxylase. Then about enterohemorrhagic E. coli. It is also known as sugar toxigenic E. coli or verocytotoxigenic E. coli. O157 or the H7 are the most common serotypes associated. It produces verotoxin or shiga like toxin. It is similar to shiga dysentery type 1 toxin and severity ranges from mild diarrhea to dysentery, hemorrhagic colitis, and hemorrhagic uremic syndrome. And the complications are more in young children and elderly people. And the cytotoxin has two subunit A and B. The A subunit inactivates the host cell 60 ribosomes, which leads to inhibition of protein synthesis. And the target is vascular endothelial cells. The lab diagnosis of enterohemorrhagic E. coli involves detection of verotoxin in stools by demonstration of cytotoxicity in viral cells uh, and ELISA rapid test and the detection of bacilli in stool uh, it does not ferment sorbitol and produce pale colonies and the rainbow agar in which O157 strains appear as black colonies then about endero aggregative E. coli its intestinal colonization is mediated by aggregative adhesion fimbri 1. It produces yeast 1 toxin that is entero aggregative heat stable toxin and the manifestations are persistent diarrhea. It is so named because it adheres to human epithelial type 2 cells in a distinct pattern that is stacked brick appearance on human epithelial type 2 cells. Then about diffusely adherent E. coli. It has the ability to adhere to human epithelial type 2 cells in a diffuse pattern and it causes diarrhea in its children aged between 2 to 6 years old. Then about urinary tract infections caused by uropathogenic E. coli. This E. coli are the most common cause of community acute as well as hospital acute urinary tract infections. And the serotypes involved are O1. O2, O4, O6, O7 and O75 and the route of spread include ascending route as well as descending route. In a descending route, hematogenous seeding of E. coli in kidney occurs and which leads to pyelonephritis. And in ascending route, the E. coli colonizes the periurethral area, then ascent urinary tract to reach the bladder which causes urethritis as well as cystitis and the further Ascent leads to pyelonephritis. Then about lab diagnosis. In lab diagnosis, the specimen collected include clean catch midstream urine, and in case of catheterized patients, urine is collected from the distal part of catheter. And in case of infants and the patient unable to avoid cases, we can get urine via suprapubic aspiration. And the transport. Normally it is processed immediately and in case of any delay greater than 2 hours, refrigerate the sample or 
which is uh, stored in boric acid or glycerol up to maximum 24 hours then direct examination on microscopic examination we get frankly turbid or blood tinged urine and on wet mount preparations we get puzzles and the term significant pyuria indicate the pyuria of more than 8 puzzles per millimeter cube or 4 lakh puzzles excreted in urine per hour is taken as significant then RBC castor or hyaline castor also is significant in the direct examination then screen test which include leukocyte esterase test which detect the leukocyte esterase secreted by pus cells present in urine then nitrate reduction test also known as grace test here we get a positive result then the catalase test is positive then triphenyl tetrazolium chloride test then glucose test paper then gram staining of urine it is not reliable indicator as the bacterial count in urine is usually very low then about culture the ideal culture medium is ZLED cysteine lactose electrolyte deficient medium which is a differential medium and it is partially sacative medium and it is support the growth of all uropathogens and it prevent the summing of proteus the commonly used mediums are McConkey agar and blood agar and uh, in the figure we can see the colonies the flat pink lactose fermenting colonies of E. coli on the McConkey agar they are showing the colonies and in blood agar we can uh, count the colonies and on McConkey agar which is used for the differentiation of the colonies then about cause concept of significant bacteria there is a fact that urine in the bladder is sterile but it get contaminated during voiding by common cell flora in the distal urethra but bacterial count in the contaminated urine is lower than that during infection so a count greater than or equal to 10 raised to 5 colony forming units per ml in a clean catch midstream correctly transported urine is considered as significant bacteria then counting of bacterial colonies first about semi-quantitative method it is a standard size loop it pick a definite standard volume of urine for culture each colony on plate correspond to one bacterium in urine then quantitative method that is per plate method which is complicated for the routine use then identification E. coli are catalyzed positive, oxidase negative, indole positive and urease negative and it is citrate not utilized as well as TSA we get acid or acid with gas. In short we can say that imbic positive positive negative negative. Then antimicrobial susceptibility testing. It detects the antibody coated bacteria detected by IFA or co-agglutination methods then treatment the drug of choice is ciprofloxacin 500 mg BD for 3 to 5 days also nitrofrontoin 100 mg BD for 7 days are given